Welcome to Convo Fango. Today we are joined by the stars of Barbarian. We've got Justin Long and Georgina Campbell. Thank you. So very briefly, can you guys kind of tell us what Barbarian is about? You go, Justin. You go. <laughs> Popcorn, <laughs> Justin, go for it. <laughs> it is about, that's <laughs> tricky. You know, because we're supposed to be talking about this thing and so much of the, of the fun of the movie is what you don't know. And so we don't want to spoil anything. So it's like, a, it's like walking around a minefield. Um, uh, that's why I'm making you do it. Cause I'm like, I don't want to fuck it up. <laughs> I make you do it as well. <laughs> no, it's um, okay. So a, a woman, a beautiful, smart woman checks into a, an Airbnb and there's already uh, a handsome uh, smart, sensitive man there who's a, <laughs> looking at one of the Skarsgård brothers. Uh, and he and the two of them have to kind of coexist and they really hit it off. And then they make the mistake of going in the in the basement and they find that there is an entire terrifying world down there. And um, and so it's it's about stuff that happens in the basement. <laughs> That's it's the a, new tagline. Yeah, stuff that happens in a basement. There, there was. I remember a story years ago. This guy Joseph Fritzel, horrible, I mean, really tragic story. He like kept his daughter in prison and like had, you know. So, so it, there, there are real world elements of like horrifying elements, stuff that you read in the paper and you think, how could anyone do that to somebody else? And um, and and there's some of that in, in it. You know, there's some real world primal horror stuff. But it, but it's also, I know this is a crazy thing to say. In, in that context, but it's also very funny. I, I don't know how to do it, but <laughs> that goes the line perfectly. It's wild because like, as you're describing it, it sounds kind of like a rom-com and like a meet cute situation, yeah. right? And then, and then we go to the basement. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is, exactly. I think uh, <laughs> I constructed a script that just keeps you second guessing and you just don't mm -hmm where you are as an audience you keep kind of getting spun around it's yeah it's fantastic have you ever had the experience angel where you're watching i've had this where it's like you know it, it, this is a real stoned thought but like when you're watching you're stoned you're watching like a hallmark christmas movie and you think what would happen if like somebody just started like swinging a machete at people <laughs> <laughs> you know, dicing people up and it's a little bit like that it's like a the high-end version of that if like story and then a curveball gets thrown that makes the audience like collectively freak out and part of the fun is just watching being in that environment where people are freaking out and then laughing and then freaking out again you know it's yes. such a fun environment justin i work for fangoria yes that's how my brain literally works all the time we're explaining, <laughs> we're explaining horror to you <laughs> Georgina, I love this because this is such a, like a well-written female character because she's very much like fuck politeness and she does everything right. Like she's making smart decisions and she's like, I'm going to offend the charming, handsome Skarsgård and stay safe, you know? So was that part of the draw for you as well? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I It's, you know, Zach wrote a very good <laughs> female character, which is, you know, not, sometimes it can be hard. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was fantastic. And I kind of love that he plays with those tropes and she's intelligent and she does the right thing and she keeps trying to do the right thing. And it's, you know, his brilliant writing that creates all these devices that still, even though she's doing everything she should, she ends up in that basement. She can't get away from it. Which is like the worst kind of horror because I'm just like, it's too relatable and I feel very uncomfortable. Yes. <laughs> All right, I know that's all the time we have. Thank you guys so much. I'm so excited for people to see this and I'm like dying to talk to everyone about it like and get to say all the things I want to say. So you know, <laughs> thank you for scaring the shit out of me. Oh, <laughs> we're flattered that we did. And, and we, we, we feel the same, Angel. We want to talk about it because uh, it's, it's it's a fun, it obviously, you know, it generates a lot of conversation. But we <laughs> I'm going to talk to you guys about it again later then when we're allowed to say all the things. <laughs> all right, bye guys. What a pleasure, Fangoria. Yeah, oh, right. I, like, I like the excitement there. I'm here excited. <laughs> I love this. All right, we, we're going to call this segment uh, Seven Minutes with Barbarian writer-director Zach Kreger. <laughs>
Let's do it. So you do a lot of like you're playing with red flags and expectations here, which I love. You're playing with the concept of redemption with a question mark, like a big question mark and sort of layering all of this into this like horrific what the fuck package. Uh, what was kind of like, the, I guess, the seed of the idea? You know, the seed of the idea is is a book I read called The Gift of Fear. And, and it's a book that is encouraging women to not ignore these tiny red flags that can come up in day-to-day -day interactions with men. And uh, there can be little things that men do that might not seem, you know, insidious on the surface, but you should not ignore them. So for example, if a man does you a favor you didn't ask for, or injects sexuality into an otherwise, you know, non-sexual conversation, or, you know, initiates physical touch, even if it's not sexual, but it's it's still inappropriate. There were there was just a lot of things that I, I realized as I was reading this book that women have to be constantly on guard for. And I don't because I'm a man and because half the population isn't a potential threat to me. And it was it was a real eye opening read. And I was I'm embarrassed to say that I, I just didn't appreciate it until until then. Right. Um, and, and I had this realization that men and women can occupy the same physical space in completely different psychological terrains. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to just write a scenario that a woman could enter that would be possibly innocent and possibly really, really deadly. And so this double booked Airbnb felt like a ripe landscape for that. And I loaded as many little tiny, almost invisible red flags as I possibly could. And I figured if I do this well, uh, it was written, you know, for, for, for I, I, I sound a little gross saying this, but for, for women to watch it and be like, I know exactly what that feels like and that sucks. And so that's kind of what I was just trying to, and I wasn't thinking this is a movie anyone will watch. This was just for me. Okay. Was just, this was just me in my garage. I was going to write a scene and it was just, that's all it was. It was just me kind of thinking this stuff out. And then as I was writing, I just started enjoying it more and more. And I just kind of ran with it. And I, I never had any outline or any plan and it just kind of grew into what it is. I love that because it branches out into definitely places that I was not expecting it to uh, evolve into. And I'm guessing you didn't expect it to evolve no, to those no. places either. Yeah. I was, I was as surprised as anyone. <laughs> we're all shocked together. We're all, yeah. we're all just blown away. What together. the hell's going on here? Yeah. I love that though, because you, it's like, I don't know. I, I really do appreciate that you did write a strong and smart female character she's doing all the right things like i mean thank you even when she makes a decision where you're like ah i don't know you can see that she's questioning it and she's right. going through the process of weighing you might the not agree with her choices but you can at least understand why she's making them i hope that's yes. the goal yes well it's very easy to hypothetically say oh i would never fucking share an airbnb with a stranger, but I'm like, I don't know if it's the middle of the night and it doesn't seem that creepy and I'm locked in the that, doors and stuff. Yeah, if it's that or sleep in your car in a strange, stormy <laughs> right. neighborhood, I, I, who knows, you know, it might be a better choice. Yes, I would like to say absolutely not. I would never, meanwhile, cut to me on the couch and I'm not even locked in a room away from right. the stranger, you know? I'm just like, yeah. here's my throat in case anyone wants to slit it in the middle of the yeah. night. Yeah, <laughs> God forbid, yeah. Which is a very scary thing. Like we're never more vulnerable than when we're asleep. So that like it, this preys upon so many fears where I'm just like, you're anxious this whole time, but also like you have this background in comedy. So you very much make that apparent in there because there's like, this could also be a meet cute. And there's also this very dark humor when sometimes it's very on the nose. There's literally a part where I was cry laughing. I don't know. <laughs> Oh really? Wait, uh, what part? It was just a music cue that I was like, "This is too, this is oh, too yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is yeah, too yeah. dark and too funny and disgusting." Yeah. And I love. It. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Amazing. So, what are the chances of us getting a prequel? Uh, pretty low. Pretty low. Pretty, pretty low. low. <laughs> that that is not the answer that I was hoping. No, for, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to send you back into the garage and. Just okay, like, all right. Although <laughs> it's funny, I, I do think there could be a sequel where you follow the, the one of the characters as they uh, have to, the, the, the mother, I'll call her the mother. I'd like to see a movie where she recovers and has to integrate into society and get her oh. GED and take her driver's test and have like, go on her first date with a boy. I think that would be a movie I'd watch. I wouldn't make it, but I'd watch the hell out of it. I love that. I would watch that. And then yeah. I would do like a double feature with like NCO yeah. Man or something, you know, like a or real like Texas out Chainsaw of water. 2, you know, one yeah. of those kinds of things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here for it. Yeah. Okay. I know we have to wrap up. I have like a million more questions. For oh you. God. Well, I, that we'll sucks. go with one. We'll go with one. Okay. Let's say you get to be the protagonist in a horror film and you're about to slay all the baddies. What do you want your soundtrack to be? Like, what do you want like that kill song to be? 
Power Trip. The band Power <laughs> Trip. I'll take any song off of Nightmare Logic. It's just like really tight, really awesome death metal, and I would love to slay baddies to that. That's my. Didn't answer. even have to think about no, it. You were ready. It, You're like, I've been waiting for this moment. Let's, let's go. <laughs> All right. All right, we're going to meet up. I'm going to meet you in your garage to, to make sure you're writing the prequel and okay, sequel. Okay. And then I'm going to shoot a montage of you All killing right. the script set to that. Okay. Set to power trip. Let's go. Set to power trip. All right. And uh, would you share an Airbnb with a stranger out of curiosity? No. Hell no. no. <laughs> oh, God. God, no. Okay. Even before writing this? No, no ne- never. Absolutely. Never in a million years. No okay. way. No. What if they seemed really like cool? Like, what if I opened the door to the Airbnb? Like, I'm relatively small. I'm. I don't probably look menacing. But see, I am my menacing. problem is is that <laughs> I, I I crave privacy so much. So mm-hmm. just the idea of having to make chit chat in the morning, you know, when I like wake up, like that's that. It has nothing to do with you or anything. It's just like I don't want to talk to anybody. You know what I mean? So that's okay. that's why. I think we have a lot of the same fears, which is probably sure. why this movie was so effective. Because I'm, <laughs> okay. uh, morning chit chat, I just want to drink my coffee in silence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my my ultimate fear is that I have to make small talk first thing in the morning. <laughs> the real horror movie is that there's nothing horrific going on aside from the fact that you're forced to be social with a stranger at seven a.m. <laughs> that is a horror movie. Oh man, that's terrifying. Oh, all right, mm-hmm. this was amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah. Mark, and in theaters September 9th, check it out. Beware of Airbnb. And shared spaces with strangers. 